Hey, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches, and we are here today to go over a couple of issues that all relate around one single tragedy, which is I scratched my new Rolex. So I want to tell you how I scratched it. I want to tell you about the one tool that every Rolex owner, or really every watch owner should own, and how you can fix a, sur a superficial or surface scratch on your Rolex. But before we get to that, we have a couple of pieces of business. First, I would like to thank Rich Made Knives for the t-shirt. Um, I'll drop a, a link to Rich's website in here. He makes um, knives, you know, really cool custom-made knives. So have a look at that. And I would also like to uh, thank the provider of this hat, Aqueductus, which is a Swedish sewage company. So I'm wearing Swedish sewage and American knives. Um, oh, and that reminds me, we should probably get the quick fist watch check out of the way. So let's do that right now. I'm wearing the Ball World Timer with a, with a dive bezel. And it's tritium tubes, it's all lit up all night. It's a very fun watch and it has the day date. So this is about as much fun as you can have for uh, under $1,500. Okay guys, let me tell you a story. But let's start real quick with a view of the watch in question. That's right. It's the Polar Explorer that I have been talking about lately. It's a, it's a new acquisition for me. I'm extremely fond of it. And what is like the first thing I did after getting it, you know, is I've scratched it. Yeah. So where did I scratch it? I scratched it here on the flank. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it particularly well on this camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a, a, a still photograph right here. I had to use magnification on the camera and then turn it just so in the light in order to catch this scratch, but I know it's there and it bugs me. Okay, so how did it happen? Well, I'm sure on a lot of YouTube channels, you have seen guys using calipers to, you know, measure the, the night, to measure the, um, to measure the watch. This one measured out at 42 0.25 so it's actually a little slightly larger than um, the 42 millimeters that it's advertised at and I find that really typical of watches they're never like dead on they're always like you know usually a little over not a little under uh, you know the advertised size but the calipers like so many of us on YouTube I just went to Amazon and ordered the cheapest caliber caliper that one could find this thing costs I don't remember what 10 or 12 dollars let me open the box down here pull it out and kind of show you what I'm looking at because this is the criminal right here and you can see you know that as you uh, as you open this thing you're measuring not only digitally but you know there's a, a, a physical scale there the problem guys is here this is metal and uh, you know I'm not the kind of person who should be trusted with power tools uh, you, you know, I own a chainsaw, but I am always like super crazy careful when I use it because I live out in the boonies, so you know, occasionally I got some trimming or I got, I got something I got to do with a chainsaw. But I am the kind of guy who would, uh, you know, accidentally cut off my own leg while trying to Facebook and chainsaw at the same time. So I, I don't usually trust myself with sharp instruments around expensive things, but like I saw, you know, I saw Random Rob do it, I saw Bruce Williams do it, you know, I, like. I've seen so many guys that I like, you know, like slapping the caliper on the watch. And I thought, oh, let me, I can do this. I can handle it. I'm never going to do it again. Um, they ought to sell this thing in plastic, you know, for people like me. Um, you know, wouldn't it be terrible if I pulled a Steve Irwin and accidentally like, you know, killed myself? This is the kind of stuff that I am capable of doing. I need to be careful with sharp metallic objects around, you know, $8,000, $9,000 pieces of equipment. So uh, I don't know, I, they should make these things in plastic, but if they did, I guess they would bend and not be accurate. I don't know, all I know is uh, you saw my picture of my, uh, of my little you know, tragedy. So let's talk about what we're gonna do about it. Now, among Rolex owners and watch collectors in general, there is a sort of a, a, you know, an argument, a dispute about whether every scratch is a, tells a story um, whether every war wound reminds you of where you were, you know, when this 
thing happened, which is fine, maybe, if you were in a bar fight in Bangkok, you know, and your, uh, and your Rolex saved you from, you know, being sliced open and stabbed in a, you know, in a bar fight, and you've got a bit of a gouge there, but you can walk around and tell everybody, yep, yeah, this thing saved my ass and, you know, in a Bangkok go-go bar. Okay, so maybe if you have an interesting story to tell with your, you know, battle scar on your watch, fine, I can understand it. But what if your battle scar makes you just feel like a schmuck because you bought $10 calipers and didn't know how to use, <laughs> didn't know how to use them properly and safely? Okay, at that point, that war wound is going to bother you. And what I'm saying is we need to remove it. Now, I don't know about you. In fact, actually, this is a quick good quick moment for me to remind you, please like, please subscribe. I always forget that because I get like into my topic, but it really helps me so much when you talk in the comments, when you subscribe, when you like or dislike, because then I know you're there. Otherwise, it's me alone with a fireplace and a watch and a, and a, and a watch scratcher. Okay, I'm the kind of guy who's going to stare at that scratch and it's going to be the only thing I'm going to see. So if you're like me, if you're not like me, so much the better. Like if you can, you know, accumulate war wounds on your watch and then maybe every five, six, seven years when you get your watch serviced, have them clean that up for you, then fine. And I salute you. I applaud you. Um, the Aqueductus hat and I are on your team. We wish we could be like you, but I'm not. I'm the kind of guy who's going to stare at this every time I put this watch on and go, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. So I need to do something about it. And that brings me to my next point, which is the one tool that every single Rolex owner needs. And here it is. Um, some of you are very familiar with this. If you are, forgive me. Um, but let's talk about your experiences with this in the comments. And if you are not familiar with this, let me talk you through what it is and how we're going to use it right now. The Cape Cod cloth is cheap. I get mine from Amazon and I keep one in the house at all times. When you open the package, there's just a cloth and it's kind of a little bit wet. I used to think that moisture was some kind of acid, but it's not, it's just a lubricant because the cloth itself is mildly abrasive. Now you never wanna use this thing with a tool or you'll be pushing too hard. Just use a finger or your thumb and moderate pressure and you will be removing only tiny, tiny bits of material so you will only really affect, in a positive way, superficial surface scratches. Um, you just got to be really careful to avoid the satin or brushed areas. So I'm going to show you how we do that now. Okay, so here we have the watch. You can kind of see that little scratch there. Really more of a, it's, I think it's because I slid the tool along it. I think I'd have been fine if I wouldn't have moved the tool. Here we have the Cape Cod cloth. Now here we have brushed satin finish on the links and on the flank of the watch we have the high polish so we we need to be careful that we don't put pressure here where it's satin it's okay if the liquid or your finger happens to touch that area but what you want to avoid is any kind of pressured polishing action we're going to confine that to this area right here so it is a simple thing. You can see I've already removed a little tiny bit of material there um, because you will see your um, cloth begin to turn gray. You're just, you're not even removing microns of material. It's, I don't know what the unit of measurement is, but it would be smaller yet than that. So I'm just applying back and forth pressure. I'm using that finger. You can see the you know, the little metallic bits there. It's very, very light. I can still see the scratch. You probably won't, but when we're finished, I will add a photograph so you can see, uh, you, you know, the end result of this. And uh, I'll give it a quick whack over here right before we're finished. So one of the things that initially concerned me when I started playing with the Cape Cod cloth was, you know, what if it's too quick? And what if I accidentally, you know, take off too much? And what I discovered is you'd be here for a very long period of time to accidentally take off too much. Okay, I'm going to do the job now um, quietly. I may speed this up or edit out so as not to bore you, but let me polish this up and then I'll show you a picture of the final result, but I'll, I'll kind of keep track of how long it took and I'll let you know that too.
Okay, so my elapsed time here has now been about four minutes, four and a half minutes of polishing using moderate pressure, and it is getting harder and harder for me to see the mark. I can still see it if I turn it into just the right light. You can see I'm removing material, but it's, um, it's very, very light. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I'm going to clean this up run it under some soap and water, and then uh, I'll come back and show you a, uh, a picture of what happened here. Well, I just used a little bit of liquid soap and warm water, and I washed up this watch. And um, what you see here is that there are still very, very light marks, but they are completely, almost invisible, really, compared to the way we started. Uh, I would really have to put on a loop and study this watch to pick up those scratches. So I feel much better about it now. You might be wondering, how much pressure did I use? I would say um, if, it would probably come down to like three or four PSI, pounds per square inch. Think of putting your fingertips into Play-Doh and pushing them in so that you just about left a mark on the Play-Doh, but you didn't squish all the way through. That's really about all that you need. Well guys, I'd like you to talk to me in the comments and tell me am I crazy for being that anal and worrying all about this little watch. I've changed over to the Polar Explorer now, so there's a wrist shot of this puppy. And uh, tell me, you know, do you worry about this kind of stuff? Should I? Is there a danger to using the Cape Cod cloth? I don't do it like, you know, constantly, but yeah, if I, if there's something that just triggers the OCD and fires me off, then, you know, I pull out the Cape Cod and I get busy. Okay, talk to me in the comments. Like, subscribe. Thanks for being with me. Goldberg, peacing out. Paint the sky your favorite color.